Give me a little silhouette of one on there. This is what a clean, disease-free American chestnut stem, uh, you know, the bark looks like. And then you look just farther down below, just a tiny little bit, and this is a canker from the blight. This is the canker. So this is a pretty advanced stage of the disease. The limb is girdled, essentially the, the limb is dying. And if you look farther up the limb, then all, all those leaves are dead. So this is ultimately what happens. So these are 50% Chinese chestnut, 50% American chestnut. And so in addition to having intermediate traits visually and intermediate traits um, in terms of blight resistance, they also you know, have a growth form that is something between an American chestnut and a Chinese chestnut. So this is a culture of the fungus that causes the chestnut blight. This fungus is called Cryphonectria parasitica, and we use this to give the disease to the trees so that we can test whether they're blight resistant or not. So rather than waiting many years to see how they respond to the disease, what we do is we cut off the tops of the plants and place the fungus that causes the disease right on top. This stem on your right has only a little bit of symptoms right at the tip here, and so that indicates to us that this stem has a good deal more blight resistance and might have better prospects for chestnut restoration. It had a sign? It, it, the, the, the mug, yeah, the mugs were... Uh... Big one in my, uh, near my grandparents' house in Arkansas. Was that at the very early part of the 20th century, it came in on other plants that are able to host that, that fungus. In particular, it was the Japanese chestnut species, which was brought over to the United States as a horticultural specimen and planted in New York City, which is where the blight on American chestnuts was originally discovered. And after its discovery, it spread throughout the eastern United States and the southern part of Canada very, very quickly. And within just a matter of years, the American chestnut was decimated on this continent. So 
disease uh, for human populations. It was a major timber species. It fueled the construction of many cities uh, throughout North America and also used for other types of, of goods. And for the wildlife of our continent, it was an enormously important food source uh, for, as you know, both in terms of the seeds and the leaves for smaller biota. North America, we are trying a whole variety of approaches uh, because we understand that there may be different sources of blight resistance coming from different types of trees. So we're continuing to try to improve on traditional breeding that includes American chestnut and Chinese chestnut genetics. Uh, we are working with our collaborators at uh, the State University of New York Environmental uh, College of Environmental Science and Forestry uh, with the transgenic uh, chestnut project that they have developed. We're looking to see is that blight resistance and susceptibility has turned out to be a genetically much more complex phenomenon than previously thought. Therefore, um, bringing in the blight resistance from Chinese chestnut as well as retaining the growth form of the American chestnut has proven to be much, much more difficult than originally hypothesized. With the transgenic project, there are a lot of very promising early results. Uh, we're looking stages, the um, huge range that it used to occupy in eastern North America spanning from Mississippi to uh, Maine and Ontario is not something that we're going to be able to replant just with our own manual efforts. It's going to start with a growing number of reintroduction populations that we plant and manage and allow them to reach maturity and hopefully reproduce because after a while it's going to be important that those restoration populations are self-sustaining and that it Yes, yeah, so both with climate change and with just overall global environmental change, we do expect continuing pressures, not just on the chestnut, but on forests, trees, and species. Overall, there will be more pests, there will be more diseases. There are pests and diseases that have probably already arrived, but just have not exploded. Uh, and we don't know about them maybe en masse quite yet. And so that's something that we're trying to prepare with by breeding as much genetic diversity as possible into our American Chestnut Restoration Project so that the